Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go learn prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord, we can. We give you all the praise and glory and honor, Lord. We can fellowship your presence, hear your word. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We speak peace to our country, we create and declare the United States of America's righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, the Jesus Lord of the United States of America. And Father God, we pray for our nation, all the nation of the world and for our missionaries out there, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. They're where they preach. They're having a minor revival. And Lord, we thank you that every day more people come to the family of God through Jesus. We pray for all the body of Christ, each and every believer, because baptized in the Holy Spirit, being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, and going forth and ruling and reigning in Christ. And Father God, I thank you for knowing him today, that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. And I pray, for us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers your word and led by Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's start our Bibles here, the Gospel of Mark. Now, let's notice here in Mark chapter 11, Jesus says this, beginning in verse 22, And Jesus answered, Have faith in God. Then he goes on and says here, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall open say it. Therefore I say unto you what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now these are two ways you and I as believers can release our faith. One way is by just speaking the mountains, problems, situations arise up in our life. Another, what we can do to receive our desires that we have, Jesus said there in, in uh, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you what things shall be desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now with that prayer, that's known as the prayer of faith. Now we go into that prayer knowing what God's will is first. So we want to get some scripture to cover what we're, gonna, we're getting ready to ask God for. That way that we know we're praying, we're praying scripturally. When we're praying scripturally, we're praying God's will. That's why we want to know what God's promises have to say. And we can all do that by simply just renewing our mind to God's word, learning God's word, and taking all those promises. They're, they're called exceedingly great and precious promises in God's word. And as we take those promises and, and use those in prayer, or whatever we're believing God for, then we've got God's will on the subject. If it's healing, then we'd use healing scriptures. If it's some financial matter, then we can have financial scriptures. But regardless, when we take scriptures, then we have the, the, the enemy cannot defeat us in these areas. We can know that, hey, you know, I've got the word. I resist you, Satan. I believe I received what I prayed for. Or we use Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I believe the mountains, the problem is gone in Jesus' name. And also, we also need to cast the care over on the Lord and worry, the things we're worried about. Remember there in First uh, Peter ch chapter 5, it says, Humble yourself, there, therefore, neath the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth you. Now, as we cast the cares, our worries, anxieties over on the Lord, because the thoughts will come to you sometimes that, well, you're not going to get what you prayed for. And those things that need to be addressed. We can say, no, I, I refuse that in Jesus' name. I believe I received it when I prayed. I took, or if we took authority over it, no, I believe the devil's bound in this situation in Jesus' name. And I'm not going to worry about it. I've turned, I've turned the situation over you. I mean, because what God gave us, he gave us the name of Jesus and authority on this earth to go forth and rule and reign. And he'll back his word. He confirms his word with signs following. He hastens his word to perform it, the Bible says. And, thank, and his word doesn't return void. So we, in Isaiah 55, verse 11, and in Mark chapter 6, verse 20, Jeremiah, we have God's word that we use. And so it's good that before we take that scripture like Mark eleven twenty four, to grab some scriptures that back up what we're getting ready to ask God for. That way we're going into the prayer knowing it's God's will that I have this because the word says this. And then when we pray that prayer, we believe we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Then what can I do? Well, just thank God you've got to see ourselves with it in Jesus' name. And resist any kind of doubt and worry that comes to you. You're not going to get it. And all this other stuff that goes along with that, that the enemy comes to try to torment the believer from receiving from God. I mean, it's one thing to believe we receive, but we need to stay attached to it. To believe we have it in Jesus' name. That's one of the part, parts about fighting a good fight of faith. We're casting down imaginations. And everything exalts itself against the knowledge of God. How are we going to do that? Well, by speaking God's word. Like we could take Mark eleven twenty four. We prayed. We re, or I prayed. I believed. I received. Then when the thought comes to you, you're not going to have it. Or anything like that. that comes up with doubt and unbelief. Say, no, I believe. I receive it. It's written. Therefore, Jesus said, therefore I say unto you. What things serve you desire? When you pray, believe, receive them. And you shall have them. I pray. I believe. I receive. In Jesus' name. And Jesus said there in John chapter 15, verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. 
Now, when we have God's word in abiding in us, then we have confidence. And we're, we're fully persuaded that we have what we prayed for. Or if we took Mark eleven twenty three 23, and we used our authority, and we spoke to a situation, told it to go in Jesus' name, pain, go from me in Jesus' name, or lack, go from me in Jesus' name, then what do we do? After that, we gave the faith decree. After that, we just praise God and thank God it's done in Jesus' name. Letting our requests be made known thanksgiving. I mean, think about it. Jesus did this in John chapter 11 when he came to the tomb of Lazarus in verse 40 and 41. What, Jesus apparently already prayed about this. Time he got there, Lazarus is dead. So what did Jesus do? He said, Father God, I thank that thou hast heard me, and I thank that you always heard me. Hear me. Now, think about this. He faced this, this terrible situation. Jesus didn't show any, he didn't back off. He didn't flinch. He just began to thank God that I believe God heard me when I prayed. Now, as believers, we want to do that. We, we, we want to implement that. We want to act that way accordingly. I prayed, I believed, I received it in Jesus' name. Because the thought, well, you'd be, you know, laying in bed at night and the thought will come to you. You're not going to get that. You know good and well you're not going to have that. Why? It's got worse. Or, you know, it's been a long time. Or whatever. That the enemy, those are thoughts are from enemy. And that's one of the reasons why we're told to cast down imaginations. To resist those thoughts. No, I rebuked that thought in Jesus' name. I prayed, I believed, I received. And Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray? Believe your sin and shout them. I prayed, I believed, I received in Jesus' name. The thought will come, you're not going to get it, you don't have it. No, I prayed, it's written. Therefore, I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray? Believe your sin and you shall have them. I prayed, I believed, I received them. Yeah, but you don't have enough faith for that. Jesus said, it's written. Therefore, I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray? Believe your sin and you shall have them. Yeah, but look how long it's been. It's written. Therefore, Jesus said, therefore I say to you, what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you see them, I mean, you shall have them. Now, why are we doing that? Resisting those thoughts are coming to us. It's trying to get us distracted, trying to talk us out of our miracle or believe it, or whatever we're believing God for, and those thoughts will constantly come. The more we re re respond by saying what the word says and thinking about what the word says, the weaker that other voice is going to get, the stronger we get. And we need to always stand our ground in Jesus' name. Whether someone prayed the prayer of agreement with us, or we gave the faith decree in Jesus' name, or we just prayed the prayer of faith ourselves. We prayed, we believe, receive in Jesus' name. And people say, you know, come along, and of course thoughts will come too, that you don't have enough faith for that. That needs to be countered. I prayed, if we use Mark eleven twenty four. I prayed, Jesus said, it's written, therefore I say to you, what things are reserved when you pray, believe, receive, and you shall have them. I believe or receive it in Jesus' name. And just acting that way. If we took Mark eleven twenty three 23 and spoke to the problem, the mount, the situation, and you created be gone in Jesus' name, and the thought comes, it's not there, look, it's still there. It's written, Jesus said, Whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, he shall for say it. I spoke to it, it's gone in Jesus' name. And if the worry comes, I've cast all my cares upon the Lord. For it's written, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for me. I'm not worried about this in Jesus' name. Feeling the worry, feeling the fear, address it with God's word. Don't talk about how you feel. Say out of that arena, say an arena of faith. Say an arena of speaking God's word. Say you can't take that. You can't handle it. It is written. He has to leave. The doubt has to go. The fear has to go. The unbelief has to go. As you and I just stay determined in Jesus' name, then we're going to keep saying what the word says. And we have to remind ourselves to do that because the temptation comes to, to pull our faith off. We need to ask yourself when, when it comes to praying to faith, praying a prayer of faith, am I going to believe that I'll receive this when I pray? And not just flippantly use it, the, the prayer of faith, but simply asking ourselves, am I going to believe that I'll receive this when I pray? Or when I speak to this, am I going to believe this is done in Jesus' name? So we want to, in other words, we're telling ourselves, once I release my faith, that's it. It's a done deal. I'm not backing off. I'm not pulling off. Not expecting it to be a long time or anything else like that. But we do have to have you know all stand, stand there for. And we must hold fast to our profession of faith. And we must just keep that word, God's word, coming out of our mouth in Jesus' name. And constantly praising God and thanking God. And be serious about what we're believing God for. And be determined in Jesus' name. And just keep that going. And as we practice God's word and apply God's word to our life, it helps us immensely in areas that we haven't even got to yet. Because the more that we receive from God, the more we learn how to receive from God. And that's what gives us experience. 
is taking scripture, again, like Mark eleven twenty three 23, or Mark eleven twenty four, 24, decreeing, declaring with verse 23, praying the prayer of faith and believing I received it. And there'll be many things will come to you that why you don't have it, why you're not going to get it. And then all those other things that come along, anything the enemy can use to get us distracted. It always brings them to our mind. He wants to remind us of someone that didn't get something. Or even prayers we pray. You never even got that. You're not going to get this either. It is written. Jesus said, therefore I say to you, what things are bizarre? When you pray, believe you see them, and you shall have them. I prayed, I believe I received. Now see what the person is doing that's doing that? They're not saying anything about the problem. They're not saying anything about what they haven't had and what they've never gotten or what someone else got. They're just simply, simply staying focused on what they believe. We always say, stay on the offense. And we always act like we've got it. So therefore, we don't entertain other thoughts that try to prove to us you're not going to get this. You're not going to have this. You don't have enough faith. You, and anything, anything the enemy will throw, he just keep put, putting out bait to get us to, to, to bite on it. He'll do all he can to distract us. Because he has no power, so he's got to get us to use our mouth against ourselves By saying, well, I guess, you know, I guess God didn't want me to have it. I guess I don't have much, enough faith, Faith, you know. Maybe God didn't really mean what he said. And anything, see? No, we stay out of that. Just to, totally ignore all that. We keep responding to the word. If we use verse 23 of Mark, a chapter 11, and we spoke to the situation, commanded to go in Jesus' name. You know, one time, I used to have this personal checkbook that was like a billfold. It folded over. You know, some of them are usually straight. Well, the one I got now is straight. But, okay, and so it's convenient. So I had, at the time, I had this van, and there was just a slot below the radio that I had to put that uh, checkbook in. It just fit. It was dark down there. Couldn't even see it. But I knew it was there. So I just, if I'm going into the grocery store or something, I just feel, feel in there and grab that checkbook and take it in. Or wherever place I got to go, it's got to write a check. Well, so I go out to my van. I'm leaving to go do some errands. And when I got in my van, I, I glanced down there, and I could see my checkbook was there. Okay, good. And then as I get ready to leave, I thought, ah, I got to go back inside the house and grab something. So I went back, and I think about this, how fast this is. I just went back in the house, went, opened the door, you know, went to the door, inside, grabbed what I needed, came back out to my van. When I stepped in my van, you're, you're higher up. When I stepped inside there, I looked down there, I guess just out of habit, my checkbook was gone. You know, you're going like this, there's no one around, you don't see anybody. How in the world would anybody even know, was there any, they just had, they couldn't have had a minute to look for it, seemingly. Well, I said, Satan, and this came to me. I said, Satan, you bring my checkbook back. You can't have it in Jesus' name. Now, I still got to go do these errands. And there's no, there's no sense me looking anywhere else because right there is where it was. And there's no one in my van. So I went back in the house and got me another book of checks. Now, I don't have the foldover thing, but I got another book of checks. So I took those with me and you know, conducted my business I had to do. And just any time I ever thought about that checkbook, I just said, Satan, you can't have it. I told you I had to bring it back. I have it in Jesus' name. You can't have it. And one day, I left a long period of time. I got up in my van, you know, getting in my van, looked down there, and there was my checkbook. Well, now, that was one instant. Now, the other time, I was checking in the hotel and getting ready to start a new England camp meeting. And they had valet parking. Now, I'd rather go park myself because I got a lot of stuff I got to unload. This is just a couple days before camp is going to start. I'm checking in the hotel and you got all the stuff you got to do. And this bellman, who um, really loved me, but anyway, he, he wants to park my car. Now, I know he knows I'm a preacher and I'm a Christian. I thought, you know, if I turn this guy down, he's going to tell all the other valet guys, you know, what kind of guy I am. So I so, said, okay, you know. So... Uh, he goes and, and, you know, I go, I go upstairs like 12 floors where it was. And when I got on the elevator, just came tomorrow, he stole one of your checks. Now I had my checks. These are business checks. You know, I had those hit, but he took a check. Now this is Saturday afternoon. This is before online stuff. Well, I told Satan, you can't have my check in Jesus name. You can't have it. Now I just, a friend of mine. One of his employees took his check and cashed it for a lot of money to some bank. And that thought came to me. I said, no, Satan, you can't have it. I read some script. When I got off the elevator someplace I could get, um, I read these scriptures in Jesus' name, went down in my car. Sure enough, the check was gone. And so, you know, I knew he took it. 
But nevertheless, I had in my heart, don't let him go park the car. But, you know, you, I, I miss God. And not only that, it's just I want to be nice to the guy and everything else enters in. You know, it is. So, okay, so I, but it came to my heart, call Monday morning and stop payment on the check at the bank. Now, i got to wait all day, rest of Saturday, all day Sunday. I mean, I tell you, it seemed like every demon and devil that wasn't doing anything was coming back and telling me, you, you know your friend, bring up the guy's name, that had that check stolen from him, and remember what they did? That thought kept coming back to me, that negative thought. I'd answer in Jesus' name. It has nothing to do with me. It's written. Jesus said, Verily I send you, what's the earth shall bind, earth shall bound it, what shall loosen earth, loosen them. I bound that in Jesus' name. Take authority of that in Jesus' name. Cast that thought down in Jesus' name. Satan, if you want to talk about that check, go talk to the Lord. I've turned over to him. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Finally, Monday got here. Can you imagine how long that would take? <laughs> Finally, Monday came here, you know. Called the bank. As soon as they opened up that morning, gave them number, of check, you know, county number, check number, and a right, you know, all that stuff you got to give them. And they stopped the payment. Today, you just do it online. It'd be a lot more simpler. But anyway, now there's two incidents there. One, I had my heart tell Satan to bring it back. The other one came to me, call the bank Monday morning. Now, both of them, I'm trying to listen to God about what to do. And both of them, I'm getting, the devil's trying to aggravate me over it, bring torment to me about the whole book I lost and about the one check that was stolen from me. Now, you see, that's what I'm, what we need to realize is we apply God's word. There's nothing I could do for the whole weekend except keep praising God, thanking God, praying the spirit. I believe my checkbook's okay in Jesus, or that check's okay. It's not going to get cashed in Jesus' name. I mean, all this, it, the devil wake up in the middle of the night with thoughts like this. Again, I, I need to be able to pay all these bills, the camp meeting that's coming in and everything else. And it just, all kinds of things is going on. You got to keep on going, you know. But both incidents were handled two different ways. Remember like David sought the Lord, inquired the Lord about what to do. So he, he just didn't assume that what he did last time in this battle, he's supposed to do it this time. So he sought the Lord. And those are two incidents there. Praise God for him. You know, the, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us to lead us and guide us. But I can, I'll tell you, that was a long weekend. Boy, I'll tell you, till 9 o'clock in the morning before the bank opened up, yeah, that was a long time. I mean, I still got to set up for camping and everything else, get everybody's rooms ready, it's coming in to be preaching and all that. But boy, I'll tell you, that, that, that devil kept talking, telling me about here that, you know, brought up my friend, how he lost all of his money and they cashed a check, you know. <laughs> I mean, Satan, you know, that's, that's how he operates. Well, what do we do all the time? What do you do? I, you don't pay attention to it. You cast down those thoughts. You keep praising God, thanking God, praying the Spirit, and everything else to get yourselves built up in Jesus' name. There's not always just one set of rules that we use every time we face the situation. God believes in guidance about what to do. But nevertheless, what we do as believers, we stay in faith in Jesus' name. We decree and declare. We bind the devil. We take authority in the name of Jesus. You can't have my check or whatever it is. You can't have it in the name of Jesus. I refuse it. And, I, and then you keep thanking God and praising God and letting the Lord know that I believe it's taken care of. Now, another time, when I was in Bible school, and I'm working this job also, um, I didn't, I, you're supposed to get paid every week. And I didn't get, they, they couldn't find my check for eight weeks in a row. So now we got eight checks somewhere that they can't find. And I got the landladies who want to start, get, get me victim of my part. She didn't believe I'm working. And then only that, I'll get behind my utilities and everything else. And so, now think about this. Eight weeks go by. I'm in Bible school. I'm still working, doing everything else. Every time I want to go get my check, I think they paid on Thursday. Every time I want to go get my check, it wasn't there. Friday, they paid on Friday. I want to go get my check, and it wasn't there. And finally, the lady that I'd go get my checks from, she run the bookkeeping department of this floor coming store, and they had like 40 crews. I'm probably one of the least checks they have to write because I'm just part-time. I'm, you know, I'm a student. So, she says to me, Jesse, I just don't know why we don't have your checks. When she said that, it's like the light went on me. I said, I do. I'm going to take care of it. She looked at me like, I'm going to go talk to the owner of the store, Mr. Gr which I've never met. And uh, I, I went out. To, she don't know what I'm going to do. I went out to my van. And I got my Bible. I opened it up. And I read Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, Mark 11, 23. And set your scripture about taking authority of the devil. And I said, now, I command my checks to be let go in Jesus' name. Think about this. I went through this for eight weeks and didn't do anything about it. Just wondered why they didn't have my checks. Before finally, I used my authority in Jesus' name. 
Satan let go of my checks. You can't have me in Jesus' name. And for the rest of that week, I just would praise God and thank, and pray in the Spirit because praying in the Spirit is going to help build us up. That's praying in tongues. And I just kept doing that. Finally, the ninth week. Now, mind you, I got the landlady's coming by. She wants to get me out of the apartment because she didn't believe I were. And they shut off my utilities. I'm behind on my tuition in school. They're going to expel you. And all this is going on. And I went eight weeks to this before I did anything about it with my authority, with the name of Jesus, with taking God's word. And yet I knew better. But when the bookkeeper said to me, she goes, I just don't know why we don't have your checks. I go, I do. We'll take care of it. Next week, they had all those nine envelopes. Praise God. So the bank's not open on Saturday and Sunday. I got paid on Friday. I, in fact, I wrote some checks to people to give them to them to hold until I told them to go ahead and cash it. And so I went to the bank and I pulled up the drive up window. They had like five drive up windows. And so I got in, you know, you get in line at one of those and, you know, you're waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting. It's getting close to four o'clock when the bank closes. And so, but you're inside. They finally put the chain behind to shut off the parking lot and put the barrier, you know, those cone things out or where it was to let people know that, you know, they can't get in. So I'm waiting, waiting. Now I'm the last person. And you know that suction thing they got, you know, that, that you put your checks in, your deposit, wherever you want. So I put all my checks in there, my deposit slip in there. And I pushed the button to send it. And that's got to go all the way from here to the bank with that vacuum thing that goes underneath the ground, underneath the concrete. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, I'm the only one around waiting and waiting and waiting. And I look at the bank, at the, at the bank, which is a pretty distance away, and the, the blinds are pulled. Finally, someone comes on a public address and says, excuse me, sir, uh, what are you waiting for? I'll go, well, I sent the container, those nine checks. I sent the container there. We never got it. I thought, man, this devil. <laughs> He's just trying. I just got all these checks, and now they're they're hitting. You know, they're it's underneath the ground somewhere. And I said, Satan, you let go of my checks in Jesus' name. You can't have them. Jesus. I don't want this lady here. What I'm saying, you say you let go of them, and all of a sudden, a few moments later, I just do, 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 and here's my container. Come back up. Now they're closed now. And I thought, to, you know, what, thanks? Yeah, I came back, but never got deposited. When I opened it up, there was my receipt. Thank you, Jesus. It get, did get deposited. Now, you see, those are these harassments that Satan brings. Whether they, when I got my checkbook stolen, or however it disappeared, or when they, someone took my one check I had, or this container here. It's underneath the ground, and plus they hadn't paid me in eight, eight weeks before I used my authority. This is why, brothers and sisters, when something comes up, that's why we use our authority right then. I bind it. I take whatever you say, use scripture in Jesus' name. Or in Jesus' name, you can't have it. Or in Jesus' name, I come against it. Instead of waiting like I did for eight weeks. Here, I knew to do that. I knew to use my authority. I used to use my tithing scriptures. You know, I use those for everything. Use my tithing scriptures. Use what the name of Jesus and that lady, who's not even saved, says to me, well, Jesse, I just don't know why we don't have your checks. I thought, I do. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to go take care of it. What I'm, she doesn't know, but I'm, gonna, I'm going after Satan to let go of him in Jesus' name. And so, praise the Lord, I wouldn't have went through all that embarrassment I went through for all those eight weeks. The landlady coming around, having to go to tuition office, a Bible school, and then you got utilities shut off, and all the other things is going on. Simply because I didn't open my mouth and say something to it. I just didn't say anything. Think about all that God invested in teaching, having ministers teach me to speak to things. And yet I didn't even do it. I just was wondering, wonder why it's not, you know, wonder why I don't get my check. Wonder, you know. Now, if I, you know, if, you, if you're kind of a gossiping person, then you'd be telling other people, I'm, I'm not doing that, but I knew enough not to do that. But, I'd be telling, calling up people, you know, they just that company hasn't paid me. They don't like me and get on all that victim stuff. No, thank God I didn't do, it, do any of that. You, at least you know not to do that. But I went through all that suffering over that, you know, knowing that I should have used my authority in Jesus' name. And you see, sometimes we catch ourselves that we didn't sit, speak to it, that we didn't take authority over it. And that can get us kind of aggravated because we thought, you know, I, I, I know better to do this. Remember when your parents would say, you knew better, no matter what kid did what that you were with, you knew better. Well, when you were taught God's word and how to apply God's word as believers, you and I know better. 
See, I knew better. I should have said something the first day. You can't have my check, Satan. Instead of going through eight weeks of suffering, now getting in the ninth week. And then he tried to keep it from getting into the bank. Well, what do we do? We use, we use the name of Jesus. We take authority. As soon as Jesus was woken up, he spoke to the storm. Think if he hadn't have. They, they ought to have drowned. Well, it must not be God's will. I don't know why. Where you know, I'm trying to preach the gospel, and here's this storm. Maybe God doesn't want us to go to where we're supposed to be going, or what I thought we were supposed to be going. You know, maybe someone's out of God's will on the boat. Maybe we should have prayed for more. You know what? I haven't been fasting, and go, that it all went down. No, he immediately addressed the situation, and I didn't do that. I didn't address this. Many Christians don't know enough to do that. They weren't taught any better. God bless them. But when we've been taught. God expects us to use our authority. And we use our authority in Jesus' name. If you didn't know a scripture, just use the name of Jesus. Say, no, I refuse this. I, I, I bind this in Jesus' name. See, Matthew 18, 18 says, Verily I see you, whatsoever shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever shall loose on earth, shall loose them. One translation says, Whatever you stop, heaven will stop. Whatever you permit, heaven will permit. Well, I permitted that eight weeks to happen. Though I was in Bible school, though I loved the Lord, though I read my Bible, Though I prayed every day, see? But I didn't use my authority. And I limited God and helped me out. Now, God has merciful and grace, okay? And thank God he does. And he helps us all the time. But we need always, our first line of defense is say something to it. So of waiting like I did for all that time. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, you gave us the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name that can be mentioned. We thank you, Father God, that you always encourage us to use our authority in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I'm going to ask you, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure, or you know you've never done it. I know what that's like. God wants you to receive Jesus, his son. And he tells us how to do it in the epistle letters. Here in, in Romans chapter 10, I want to read these three scriptures. And if you're not sure if you've done this or not, or you know you have done it, let's do it today. Today's the day of salvation. Today, today, we're alive right now to do this. Amen? And I want to get done reading the scripture. I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me. If you mean what you're saying, you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Now, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in the heart God is raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, that's the spirit, with the heart man believes righteousness, and with the mouth flesh man salvation. Verse 13 says, for whosoever called him Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this prayer today, and let's receive Jesus Christ, the Lord. The most important part of this prayer is you confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord. Okay? Say this after me. Mean it. And you receive Jesus. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment to sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing me from all my sins. And thank you, Jesus, protect me that I'll never go to hell. That you just now give me, I just now receive my everlasting eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You prayed that prayer. Again, the most important part is confessing Jesus the Lord. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me, if you would, at justrichministries.com. And you don't have to, but I'd like to hear from you. Also, if you got a prayer request, you can send that in, too. If you want to write, you know, some people would rather prefer writing. I understand that. You can write me at Jesse Rich Ministries. Jot down this address so you have it. Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. And give me your prayer request, and Scripture will stand with you. Also, we have church on the phone tonight, 7 o'clock. You can take advantage of that. And we have communion then, usually, too. That phone number and access code should be right on the Facebook page. Enjoy being with you today. I want to encourage you. Keep reading your New Testament decree and declaring about who you are in Christ Jesus. Till next, till next time, it's Brother Rich. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.